In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to take another look at how to emulate the movement of a camera across the still image in your project using the Magic Motion tool. We have another tutorial where we show you how to use the 21 presets that are given to you in the Magic Motion tool. But in this case, we're going to begin to build our own motion sequence using the Magic Motion and the design options that we find there. In order to invoke that particular component of uh, PowerDirector, all you need is an image on the screen, and we picked an image of Masada and dropped it on track number one. With the image highlighted, we can get into the Magic Motion tool in one of two ways. The easiest way is to use the Alt key and then press the number two key on the keyboard. Or if you forget the keystroke combination, you can click on the magic wand and click on magic motion. And it reminds you it's Alt plus the two key. That gets you into your magic motion tool. Like I said, we have, have a tutorial on how to use each of the presets. We're going to drag all the way down and use the user defined option. That will get us into our editor. And I'd like to describe a little bit about this Magic Motion Designer for you. We have our working space in the center, and then we have in the upper right a preview window. This is what will show you what your finished product will look like. We have uh, degrees here set default to zero where we can tilt the image. We'll show you more about that later in another uh, exercise. And then we can control the aspect ratio. We can set it to a 4 by 3, 16 by 9, 9 by 16, or freeform. I'll leave mine at 16 by 9 for now. And then we have some other controls here. Uh, we can control whether we want the grid lines on or off, or the TV safe zone on or off. Uh, we have a play and a pause and a frame forward, frame backward. We have a fit. We can control whether what we see on the screen fits within this particular screen, or we can go for all the way from 10% up to 300% of the image. So those are some of the controls that we have. Now, uh, what I'd like to do is describe we have a blue dot in the center of the screen. That is the default location. It basically tells you the center of your image. And we can move the center of, as it were, the camera from this location to any other location using a keyframe. Whenever I talk about keyframes, I like to define it because it's a rather alien term if you haven't done a lot of video editing. Motion pictures are made up of frames, all commonly 24 to 30 frames per second. And a keyframe basically controls what the attributes of any particular frame happen to be. When you're working with a still image, you have a static frame. So every, every moment that that is on the screen, it's the same picture. So we're going to control in those key uh, uh, moments what the attributes happen to be. So we start out with one keyframe, which is the little diamond, the colored diamond, the pinkish diamond on the left side. And since we haven't changed anything, when we play the image, uh, nothing happens because the keyframe just inherited, we're going to be center, we're going to be full screen. But we can change both the location of the center of the image and the size of the image. In this particular uh, look at my Magic Motion Designer, we're going to focus on size. And to resize the image at any keyframe, any moment in time, all you need to do is take any of the handles and I like using the corners because it keeps the proportion. And I'm going to make this one smaller. And you see in my preview screen, it has said in this moment in time, my image will only be this large. We're taking a subset of all the pixels on the screen, and that's our image. So if I play this at this moment in time, it, this is what my result will be. Now there's no motion here because I only have one keyframe. And so whatever it I set at this moment in time, those attributes are inherited through the rest of the sequence of the shot. But if I add another keyframe, let's put one at the end over here to, to do that, 
we just click our triangle on the slider here and then we can click the plus to add a keyframe at that current location. If we hit the double diamonds, we duplicate the keyframe. So if I duplicate it, it will have the same attributes as the one to immediately to the left of it, which in this case won't change anything because if, the, uh, if it looks the same here as it does here, there is no image of motion. So I'll set a new keyframe by clicking on the diamond and now this diamond is active. And there are several things that I can change, but let me change just one thing. Let me just change the size here by making it a little bit bigger. We're not going to use the whole image yet, but just one small part. And so we'll go ahead and we'll play this segment again. And if you look at the upper right preview screen, you'll see that between the one point in time and the other point in time, uh, the image seems to get larger. I'm backing the camera up as it were. It's a nice effect that you can use. And uh, so this is changing the size of the visible image in your end product. Now you can take a keyframe and move it. The closer they are to each other, the faster the apparent motion. And so we'll put these very near each other and watch what happens. I'm going to start and we'll play again after I took that and dragged it. And now if you look in the preview screen, it, it goes to this place and then it basically it says, I don't have any more instructions, so I'm going to <clears throat> look to freeze it, as it were, at this location. Let's add a third keyframe. Let's add one here. We put, hit the plus key over here at the bottom. You have to do that before you make a change. And then we'll make this one, uh, let's make it a little bigger yet. And now we'll go ahead and we'll play this and we'll watch it zooms out to this size and then more slowly it zooms to something like slightly larger. And again the illusion of speed is because of the distance between these two keyframes. Because they're farther apart it happens more slowly in time, the transition does. If I were to make these approximately the same uh, then the transition would be sm smooth from one to the other. If I say, well, I just want to transition from keyframe one to keyframe three and remove keyframe two, I hit the minus here, and that would take it out, and now I only have one transition before it apparently freezes. And we'll play this one. And now I basically have one smooth transition from the smaller size to this uh, intermediate size. And so you can do all kinds of things with keyframes. We could, uh, we'll put one real close here again. I'll hit the plus diamond. And uh, let's go ahead and we'll make it small, very tiny. And we'll do one more here. We'll hit a plus here. And we'll make it full screen. And now we're going to go to small, to big, and then back down again. I'll hit the uh, square here and we'll go ahead and play it and watch the preview screen. Yeah, it goes in and out and then back down again and then it freezes. This is one way in which you can change the size of the image using keyframes in Magic Motion Designer. We'll also deal with moving the center of the camera in the next lesson.